Help support Friendo Club by going to patreon.com slash Stephen Larson or clicking join at youtube.com slash Stephen Larson. Access to bonus episodes, question threads for the Going In Raw podcast, and entry to our monthly wrestling predictions challenges. Join the Friendo Club today. Hey, Friendo, Steve here. Hey, Larson. And welcome back to Going In Raw, the only pro wrestling podcast you need to be listening to. It's WrestleMania Night One. It's in the books. Bloodline rules, Larson. Bloodline rules. Perhaps for the last time, as The yeah. Rock and Roman Reigns join forces and uh, defeat the nefarious Cody Rhodes and, and Seth Rollins to ensure that tomorrow night's main event will be a gloriously overbooked. Oh, disaster of a match. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be just a mess, but hopefully an entertaining mess. Yeah. So if the back half of tonight's main event is any indication, it should be if it's going to if that's sort of like, a you know, uh, uh, some template. evidence there, a template. Yeah. yeah. Of what we're going to expect for tomorrow could be a lot of fun. If it's just nothing but that first half and nothing else, then it's probably not going to be great. Interesting night one for WrestleMania. The last couple of years, night one has been kind of the more exciting, the more interesting yeah. um, of the two. Yeah, without a doubt. Maybe we'll get that tomorrow. It'll be the inverse because night one, with with a couple exceptions here or there, um, was kind of underwhelming. It was all right. Yeah, but very rarely on a couple occasions they ever rise above just kind of all right. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the the ladder match had some fun spots. It's kind of the expected winners won. Um, like Gunther and Sammy was good. But I don't know if it ever really rose above maybe pretty good. Um, like Jay versus Jimmy was kind of a letdown. The match existed for one story beat, and then past that, that was it. What preceded that one story beat? It's kind of middle of the road. Yeah. Uh, um. You know, like Rhea and Becky was really good. It was a really good match. Mm -hmm. Um. You know, especially considering that Becky was apparently under the weather and had a hundred two fever. You know, I thought I actually I like that one. I like yeah. That, that match was really good. That yeah. match was really good. Um, Rhea looked amazing. Like she it's did. not just like physical. She did like aesthetically look amazing. Like that hair is great. Um, but she really did come off and you know, they're selling that Becky because it's true. Like she has, she came into this with a fever and strep throat and that's not yeah. good. Yeah. But like Rhea looked like a dominant force, even yeah. a step of, but maybe it was just the visual change that we got with like the long hair. But she looked like even a step more dominant than she has been. Maybe because the last big main event she had was in Perth with Nia Jax. And Nia Jax yeah. is like a physically overwhelming opponent. And this is a different type of match. But by the end, Rhea just looked like nobody. Yeah. Nobody yeah. could beat her. Yeah. And and I, I really liked the story that they told in that match. I thought it was really good. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it just... It seemed like kind of, except for a couple of exceptions, the opening bout, the end of the main event, portions of Gunther and Sammy, um, that it just seemed like uh, so much of the presentation in terms of the matches were put together and how the stories were laid out were just kind of booked for the broadest possible audience is how I'll say it. Like the work rate wasn't terribly high. For a lot of matches, I'm not saying all of them, for a lot of the matches. Do you think, let me ask you something, because you're, you're absolutely right. Like... Let's take Jimmy versus Jay, for example, because I think in retrospect, you know, I want to actually go back and watch Sammy versus Gunther again. I think it was a I, it, I suspect I'll just put it this way. I suspect it's better than I remember it being because, like, I don't know. Part of me was just like, man, Gunther's going to lose. And you it, know that. And they're, they really built this so that Sammy, like, had to win this thing. Yeah. Um, but it's Gunther. And so there's never a foregone conclusion on anything. No, I mean, um, it was pretty much 12 minutes of Gunther beating the hell out of Sammy, Sammy getting to his feet, hitting a, a brain buster on the top turnbuckle, which I'll always pop for, and a couple of Huluva kicks to get the win. That was pretty much the match in between power bombs and chops. Gunther would direct his attention to Sammy's wife, talk some crap. Gunther's arrogance and hubris got the best of him. Yes, it did. Um, and so that I, I want to sort of withhold 
all my judgment because I yeah. suspect it's better than like I'm 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 it wasn't a bad match. No, it was it was a good match and it might have even been a really good match. I know people are complaining. People in our chat were complaining that that should have been the Gable match. Um but uh, because now like is Gable going to even get a shot at Gunther? I kind of feel like that's unfinished business right there. Well, what then, Gunther, sorry, what Gable was after was the Intercontinental title, I think. Not so much Gunther. Any I mean, I, well, I, I think, dude, come on. Like, he blamed Gunther for, for he's got to get a pound of flesh from that, you would oh, think. Oh, wow, is Gable going to beat Gunther now that Gunther's lost to Sammy? I hope not. That's what I'm getting at. I hope no, not. don't have that happen. Don't have that happen. <laughs> don't, you know, don't I, manifest that one. You know, like, the, the match that was kind of in the middle of the show, and I think was kind of the most underwhelming, was, was Jay and Jimmy. And it was just, it was laid out where they super kick each other a bunch. And then there's a, a story beat towards the end where, where, Jimmy acts like he's 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 contrite about everything that's happened. He's like, "Oh, forgive me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry." Of course, it's all a ruse mm -hmm. for Jay to let his guard down so he could take advantage, but it didn't really lead. It led to him still taking the L. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, if something if he had done something like that and beat Jay, all right, that's intriguing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but Jay just you know coming back from the subterfuge to get the win. All right, I mean that makes sense. I know Jay's super popular. It just seemed like the door is closed on that as opposed to let's let's explore ideas afterwards. You're right. I feel like that because th it's funny because like when I think of the other matches, that seems to be like the one that's kind of a tipping point. If yeah. that absolutely killed it, I might have a better overview of the entire night. You know, because in a lot, you know, that's that's what nearly a year's worth of build for that match. And there's a lot to work with there. And it seemed like, by and large, that was all kind of disregarded, except for one moment where Jimmy's like, "Yeah, hey, I'm sorry," because he's trying to take advantage of 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 Jay, you know, still having some love in his heart for his brother. Yeah, I felt like it was a very simple story beat, and I, I thought it was an effective one that could have been told with a bit more like depth to it and a bit more meat to it, yeah. as opposed to a very simple you know, well, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And, you know, he's trying to cover his face and everything. And then, you know, he goes and he, and he sucker super kicks him. Um, and it was very simplistic. Let me ask, is there any chance, and I have no idea if this is even a thought or a language that they would use, but hey guys, this is WrestleMania. We're going to have a lot of new eyes on our product. You know, we're, this is probably going to be the most watched paper WrestleMania. They're going to claim this most time, watched yeah. WrestleMania, yeah. like whatever. And so we want to boil the matches down to some fairly simplistic it's story beats. It's entirely possible. It is possible. I have no idea if that's the case, but it kind of feels like that's the route they went. And another thing, too, is I think just about every match was preceded by a pretty lengthy recap package of the story leading into it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and, and yeah, I know they do that more often than not for most matches, but not every match gets a pretty extended recap package heading into it. On yeah. a pay per view, yeah. So maybe it's a situation where, like, you know, companies uh, running hitting on all cylinders right now, riding this wave of popularity. Rocks on the card might bring in casual fans, people just curious about what's going on. Um, mm -hmm. Let's 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 do extended recaps for all the stories, and 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 make the stories in the matches uh, uh, pretty broad. This is like, it's funny because this is like for just speaking personally, thinking ahead to like when this review is up and there's comments, this is like the worst kind of pay-per-view because half the people are going to be like, what are you talking about? This is absolute dog shit. And you're trying to make it sound good. I and know. then half the people are going to be like, I loved it. I thought it was awesome. <laughs> I know. Here's the thing. Nothing on the show was bad. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Nothing was bad. Yeah. And some of it was very good. Nothing was compelling though. Yeah. You know, from a story perspective, really. I mean, I yeah. like Rhea and Becky was good, but we that knew was the good. Outcome. But it just sort of reinforces what what Rhea is to sort the of first, another degree. Yeah, yeah, it does. She's it does. leveled we knew up the outcome, a bunch. You know, more. we knew what was going to happen. And like the 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 match with Damage Control against Jade and Bianca and Naomi. You know, the the mission of that match was to make Jade. And you know, Bianca and Naomi are already massive stars. To make Jade and them as a unit. Massive stars. You know what I mean? And mission yeah. accomplished. They're, they're, they're at the alone. press conference right now, by the way. And my oh, goodness, right. another costume change. They look they look amazing. Yeah, presentation off the charts amazing. Off the charts. And solid match. 
Yeah. Um, but I, it, you walk into WrestleMania and it's the culmination of the previous year, in some cases, years of story. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, I don't know. You just kind of hope that the culmination is satisfying given the investment you've put into it as a viewer. And here's the thing. We are we are only halfway through the WrestleMania yeah. event. Yeah. Last year, night one, absolutely killer. Night two, a little on the... Well, I mean, you know, with, with the Cody stuff, kind of controversial, I guess, if you will, with, like, you know, the, the fan base. But also, like, just in general, night two last year uh, was a bit on the underwhelming sign regardless. Yeah. Um, if you look at what we got tomorrow night... Um, we've got some potential for some number one. I do think that the main event tomorrow is going to be killer. I think that it's going to, they're going to do the overbook thing. It's going to be wildly fun. It's going to be all the best bits of tonight's main event, which some of the best bits were wildly entertaining. Yeah. yeah. And I feel like it's going to be the majority of the match tomorrow night. So that's going to be potential for really good. If they give EO and Bailey like at least 15 minutes, may hopefully 20 they could put on a match of the year candidate. I firmly believe that. Mm-hmm. I think that could be awesome. LA Knight versus AJ Styles. It's like, are you going to get an LA Knight match? Or are you going to get an AJ Styles yeah, match? Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> what are you going to get? Um, Seth versus Drew should be really interesting. Um, yeah. Because if Seth walks in selling anything from tonight, then, you know, that, that'll that end. Plus, with CM Punk on commentary, that should make it good, too. I, I get the feeling the Philadelphia street fight is going to be a big turd. I don't know why. I feel like they just, those two teams probably don't have a lot of chemistry. Street fights are kind of tricky anyways. Yeah. I, I hope mean, it, they just got to say, go out there and destroy stuff, you know? Yeah. Uh, and then the United States championship match, there's a lot of good talent in there. Uh, but, you know, if the chemistry's off, then it could also be kind of a turd of a match, or it could be really good. You know, yeah. that tomorrow's got the potential. That might be the one match that the entire night hinges on, you know? It could hinges be like, on. like it kind of felt like Jimmy and Jay was tonight. Yeah. 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 Uh, a couple super chats here. Uh, well, first up, we've got, man, we've had so many new channel members and patrons over the past. You know, because we got this big blue predictions challenge going on, of course. Right now, Gamer Realm, I'm telling you, this dude has got somebody on the inside uh, feeding him these results because I think he might be kind of perfect uh, for night one. Yeah. Uh, if yeah, not I believe Gamer Realm is perfect for night one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then we've got uh, first name John here with the uh, super chat says, I'm sorry, with being a, a Friendo Club member, says, my favorite part of WrestleMania. Was all of the sponsors more sponsors, please? They had a lot of sponsors tonight. Basically, what every your, match had its own sponsor. Yeah. What was your favorite sponsor of the night, Larson? Oh, maybe I don't know. Let's say dude wipes at first, but then they're just they're just they're just wet wipes apparently. Well, you're a guy who appreciates cleanliness. I do, but it's just if it's just your your run of the mill wet wipe that's got some uh, a, 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 mar- a marketing kind of tact attached mm-hmm. to it. Not, it's really not that impressive. I don't know anything about dude wipes. This is all based on chat. Martin Arango here uh, has been a member for nine months now. Says Mania Night One was good. I was pissed Gunther lost. My son was happy Sami Zayn won. Usos match fell flat and Cargill not getting a proper entrance stunk. Yeah, we were denied a Jade Cargill WrestleMania solo entrance. I know their 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 team entrance was awesome though. It was really cool. Yeah, it was really cool. It was really cool. Um, Dan Klockner also here became a Friendo Club channel member. Doc Hensel is back. Says, hey, guys, Jimmy and Jay underwhelmed. Main event was a car crash of awesomeness. Wish Gunther won, but what he could do. A lot of people wanted Gunther to win. Yeah, I, I, you know, I don't think we were alone in the sentiment of of having Gunther get the win at WrestleMania. You know. Yeah, I don't think we were alone in that sentiment not whatsoever, at least amongst our audience. I, don't, I definitely don't think we were alone. Um yeah, I don't know. I don't know what else to say. Maybe it's one of those things where, where you know, if if I get a good night's sleep, wake up, maybe revisit a couple of things, maybe I have a different perspective on things. So I, I kind of quickly went through the card and jotted down, at least initially, here sitting thinking about it, uh, star numbers for the match. Yeah, right. And, like, they're all fine, you know, but, you know, nothing really goes terribly low, but I don't feel like anything really – Nothing, I didn't feel like anything was necessarily both four stars. Yeah. Doc here says night two is always going to be hyped up more than night one for me. Stan is the man is here with Super Chat says just don't like Gunther Rain ending to Sammy when the win could have helped someone else way more. I'm sort of torn about that. Like, 
on one hand, I kind of like the prestige of the Intercontinental Championship going to somebody who has such a wonderful career already makes it feel like it's a main event level title. Um, and, and Sammy's got history with the title. They told a good story, not a great story. They told a good story with it. Um, and, and so I'm, I think I'm okay with that. I'm just kind of curious, like with the world heavyweight scene being, and the draft is coming up. So who knows how it's going to shake yeah. out, but with yeah. the world heavyweight title scene, I mean, for all we know, Gunther might make a, you know, a, a lateral move and be the guy to beat Logan Paul after the draft. I don't know. Uh, Alex Foster with Super Chat says, everyone says The Rock uh, held up a gun symbol when he first came back, but it, was it possible that it was an L? And does the L stand for Larson? I mean, that'd be just about surprising to me as anybody else. <laughs> Lachlan Shaw says, uh, it didn't feel like mania, only felt like it because of the logo. Um, we'll get to some of more of these super chats here in a second. Let's talk about before before we get to the, the breakdown of the matches, the 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 tag team ladder match again, a perfectly fun match, but didn't really ever transcend past a perfectly fun match. Um, as anticipated, we saw the tag titles split, and neither of them staying with Judgment Day. Yeah. So it's entirely possible that Judgment Day walks out of Mania. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow with regards to Damian Priest and the May the Bank briefcase. With only Rhea Ripley holding championship gold. Um, you know, we got Awesome Truth, as expected, with the Raw titles. A-Town down under, Waller and Theory with the SmackDown uh, tag titles. It was kind of a bummer, though, because... Of course, Awesome Truth gets the room at the end, holding the titles up because they won. But uh, Waller, in theory, got the SmackDown titles earlier. Waller takes a bump. He's out of the match. Austin Theory, I can't remember how he got kind of like written out of the match. And so they never really got their celebratory moment of being champions. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, they're bad guys, you know. Yeah, but still, give them a moment. They're bad guys. We're we're champs. I'm sure they'll have like a whole Waller effect. Party what they should have done. Down. What they should have done. So you have you have Awesome Truth celebrating. You know they're all happy, and then you have Waller selling that spot through the ladder. Uh, and mm. and and it'd be Austin Theory kind of rolls up over to him, and he's selling whatever, and they just kind of like look at each other, and realize, oh hey, we're champions, cool, hey, hey we're champions, uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. At least they could have done that. Yeah, they could have done that. Something like when Pat McAfee was selling the stunner, and he was on the ground pouring the beer in his mouth. You know. That was pretty funny. Something kind of funny. Uh, Eastside Reviews here with the Super Chat says, Night one was all overall all right. Killer opener with Rhea and Becky. Main event was super fun. The Rock not looking cooked made me happy. Everything that is, else was that, all right. That was, you know, we were wondering, The Rock hasn't wrestled in a long time. Yeah. He's enormously jacked. He's getting up there in years. Is he going to get blown up? Is his body going to hold up? Especially after we saw this match, it would be 45 minutes. Yeah. And we thought maybe that would include uh, introductions. I think the nope. match itself was probably close to 45 minutes. It was 44-35. Okay. So they went under go. by 25 seconds. Um, and, you know, did he move like he did in the, the late 90s? Obviously not. But, you know, it wasn't as if Roman was wrestling, wrestled 95% of the match and The Rock just tagged in for spot duty here and there and got the finish. Yeah, right. Yeah. He was involved. He took a rock bottom through the announce table. You know, yeah. he was brawling through the crowd. Yeah. No. So, right. You know, all things considered, Rock did a terrific job. Yeah. He really did. Like you can tell he was that he was careful, but once he got moving, once they were getting into it, like you said, he took the rock bottom, he took some big bumps. Um, you know, it seemed like he might have pulled the hamstring on the uh, on the people's elbow the last thing he did. <laughs> Um, because he was like, he wasn't limping before that, but afterwards he had like a very, very slight limp. Um, but, uh, but regardless, like, Hey, good on him. He didn't look like he was gassed in the first two minutes. It was a 44 minute match Yep. and he was active and he looked great. He looked yep. amazing. Yeah, he did. He um, had one of the best cells of a spear I've ever seen. I don't know how it would have looked if it was just him and Roman. And I don't know how it's going to look if they do rock and Roman next year or rock and Cody and, you know, SummerSlam or anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know about any of that, but for this match tonight, Hey, it, it really wasn't that bad. You know, I think, yeah, did, no, hats off the rock. Job. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah and absolutely. Remember, remember we did that. What if video on Friendo club and someone said, Oh, it seems like the rock is phoning it in. <laughs> 
dude, you know, I, I will give it up to him. He was out there and the story beat of him establishing to the ref, I'm the man around here and you are not going to count out. And then when Roman had Cody in the guillotine and Rock was holding uh, uh, Cody's legs under the ropes and the Rock was like, I can't do anything. Um, the yeah. ref, sorry, the ref was like, yeah. I can't do anything. I'm sorry. And then he had to apologize to Cody once because uh, Rock was cheating and he was like, I can't do anything. I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> it was yeah. the it was the uh, it was he punched him in the dick. Yeah, he punched him square. He was like, Cody, I'm sorry. He punched Seth. Yeah. He's like, I'm sorry. I can't do anything about that. Yep. Yep. That um, was good. That was good. Yeah. Rock, Rock was highly entertaining tonight. Yeah, he was. He was highly he was. entertaining. I thought it yeah. was really, really good. So, um, so I don't know. It's like the more we talk about, it, I think the, yeah, the one match that was sort of the, the fulcrum, if you will, would be like Jimmy and Jay. You yeah. know, that was sort of bizarrely simple and all, not all that great. Yeah. It wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't. Anyways, before we get into the nitty gritty of, WrestleMania night one, Lars, would you like to pay some bills? Let's do it. This episode of Going in Raw is sponsored by BetterHelp, Steve. Yes. You know, I don't know about you, but I feel like my social battery ain't what it used to be. You know, I've been attending uh, some get-togethers. You know, now that the weather is starting to warm up, winter on the way out, I kind of feel like I'm ignoring my social battery level, and spreading my social energy a bit thin. Nah, man, I hear you. And I've often asked myself, self, what's the right amount of socializing for me? And how do I recharge my social battery after socializing? Yeah, I asked myself those questions too. And whether you thrive around people or feel like you need some time alone, therapy can give you the self-awareness to build a social life that doesn't drain your battery. Back when I was dealing with severe anxiety in my mid-20s, my social battery is basically running on empty. But therapy helped me learn the tools I needed to better cope with my anxiety so I can get back to feeling comfortable in social situations. And if you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. BetterHelp is completely online and designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited for your schedule. All you got to do to get started is fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist. Then you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Find your social sweet spot with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp dot com slash raw today to get 10 percent off your first month that's better help h-e-l-p dot com slash raw all right so exciting news we got a new then now forever oh that was great and it's space based space themed it's like a star trek version of then now forever you have like constellations and then there was like a whole like weird wormhole of the WWE, WWE fans. Universe, yeah. Like the IWC is just a giant wormhole. Uh, you know, or it's like Interstellar when they had like the 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 cylindrical uh space. Did you ever watch Interstellar? Never seen it. Oh, okay. Yeah, they did the thing. I think it's supposed to be, don't it's hard to explain. You don't have to explain. I I'll probably never watch this. Don't don't worry about it. Yeah, you're not really missing much. That's what you keep saying. So I don't really see any. any and yet, I've watched so many like film theory type videos on it. And you talk about it quite a bit, right? I think I like actually do. It's one of those movies I'm fascinated by, but I'm like, man, it just there's things about it that bother me. Anyways, anyways. Um, so yeah, that was really exciting and uh, and unexpected. And it's you know like I, what I thought. Different. You know, I get it, it's the WWE Universe. So they want to be space themed, but I thought. Gosh, what WrestleMania intro was it? They had the constellations. I'm pretty sure it was Warrior Hogan. So six. Yeah. Um, and I thought that's I thought this it was the open to the show, and I thought that's what they were referencing. Yeah, there could be a little bit of that there. You know, who but, knows? You I'm guessing know. it's just the universe is making space theme. Or uh, Triple H, he noticed that Pluto TV now has a oh. third Star Trek channel, and it's exclusively Deep Space Nine. That to me is like, man, throw your ones up for Benjamin Cisco, dude. Oh my gosh, top tier Starfleet captain. Anyways, uh, so we got a new then now forever. We got a video package with Meek Mill. Uh, lots of Philadelphia stuff because, as we know, WrestleMania emanating from Philadelphia. Cole welcomes us to Philadelphia, uh, and then cold. Uh, it was cold. They made a point of saying it was chilly all night. All night they were saying it was chilly. It's like we They're get getting it. constant weather updates, and it looked cold based on the crowd, based on the fact that Michael Cole at one point put a beanie on. Some of them seem pretty at, miserable. At Some the of the commentary the desk, crowd. yeah, it seemed pretty cold. So yeah, they're like, "Why? Why did we do this?" Anyways, first match of the night, 
as mentioned earlier, Becky Lynch versus Rhea Ripley. Really, oh, dude, really, really you can't fun. Hold bout. on yeah. a second. Triple what? H came out and introduced. Oh, things. sorry. I'm trying to set the stage here. We got. Sorry. Who did the uh, the national anthem? It was Coco Jones did the national anthem. Did a killer job. Triple H comes out. Very simple. He just said, uh, "Man, I live for this." Welcome to a new time. Welcome to a new era. Welcome to WrestleMania. Let's get ready to suck it. He didn't say that. He kept it very short, though. Suck it. Didn't even say that. Yeah. He did the whole, like, president routine that he did back in the DX days where he just cursed <laughs> up a storm and the USA Network was pissed off. Yeah, upset. Had to bleep it all out. Yeah. Um. So, yes, first match, though. Becky Lynch versus Rhea Ripley for the WB uh, Women's Championship. Um, Becky had this entrance where she, they had a, the, the CG book, her book, and there was passages that were highlighted in red. And then a portal opened up in the bottom part of the book, and she walked through it for her entrance. It was like a Nicolas Cage movie. Like yeah. Like he's stealing some sort of old book from like the founders or something, and then it's like magical. You know, he opens it up. Magical like, oh, a portal. Yeah. There's a portal in this book. I mean, that's a decent Nick Cage. It's the first time I heard you, heard you do that. <laughs> And then Rhea Ripley had the uh, the live band entrance with the band. I don't remember what they're called. Um, who does her theme? And as we had this conversation on the stream, where me personally, I'm kind of eh, I'm not really into the live introductions or wrestling shows because usually the audio is just not great. No, you, you have know? a great point. Usually they're dog shit. Yeah, usually they're not great. And I and the like the 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 mix. I don't know if it's if it's the same in the stadium or, or what we get on TV isn't the best. Yeah, I don't know what in terms of the monitor situation, you know, the performers have in terms of hearing themselves perform. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so usually I'm just kind of, yeah, whatever. But in terms of musical performances at wrestling shows for introductions, this one was, was pretty solid. I thought this was all right. Yeah, you're right. Because yeah. it just sounded like the regular theme song. This like sounded pretty much 85% of what the recording sounded like. Yeah, he was, he was mixed fine. So yeah, that's it was good. mixed all right. It was all right. Yeah. Um, and uh, early in this match and throughout at commentary, it uh, mentioned that Becky Lynch was battling strep throat, I believe. Yeah. 102 degree temperature, which is no fun to wrestle with that in the first place and having to do that when it's cold outside. Did I say Miserable. 120 degree earlier? Because at that point, your brain is basically. Yeah, dead. I don't think you can. You can't survive that. No. <laughs> it's 102. No. <laughs> um, so hats off to Becky for, for, for putting forth a hell of a performance. Yeah you know, while not feeling well um, and, and in less than ideal conditions out there in the cold. That's not fun. Not fun. Yeah, no, that sounds horrible. Strep throat is gnarly. I used to and, get it yeah. like all the time when I was a kid. Oh, yeah. That was like my thing. Actually, it was that. And then when I was really young, but like before we went to England, maybe the weather had something to do with it. I get pink eye a bunch. Oh, it's the worst. I, I hate it. it. I can't oh, it's, it. it's the worst. Yeah, it was strep throat. I'd always get that every single year around February. I get the same thing. Huh. That's interesting. Yeah. Isn't that weird? It is weird. Anyways, uh, so yeah, Rhea Ripley ended up. It was great because like oh, so, Motionless and White is the name of the band that performs her entrance. Thanks, Chris Garrix. Again, he, Chris doing a great oh, job of the notes here. Chris. Thank you, Chris. Chris is awesome. Chris is great. Uh, Handling the note taking for our pay per views. Chris, you might end up doing our NXT notes too because Larson's like NXT is a very talky show, so I don't blame you for that one. And I don't want you grumpy during these reviews. Like, I didn't like it because I had to take a lot of notes. See, I watched it yesterday to, to, to prep for predictions. I wasn't taking any notes. Yeah. I enjoyed it fine. <laughs> All right. So you won't be but we grumpy. Used to, we used to do, review it on a regular basis because there's so many segments and a lot of talking. They it talk add at least an extra half hour, if not 45 minutes, to the viewing experience. It just took forever. Yeah, yeah. It felt like. All right, Chris. Well. Not right anytime now. soon. Well, I'll, I'll try to see if I can come up with a method that doesn't elongate the process. Chris, can you work for us this Tuesday? Can you just start doing NXT this Tuesday? Well, we'll just do it, man. Okay, we'll just do it. Uh, anyways. Feel bad. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. We should, you know what we should do? Whoever wins like the most games of 21. No, let's make it for the three point contest. Whoever wins the. the oh, the most so you just want me to do notes all the time. <laughs> You had it right to begin with. <laughs> yeah, because we're kind of even Steven on 21. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, like you're man. good for 10 out of 25. Uh, yeah, 8 out of 25 is pretty good for me, you know? <laughs> Chris, if you can start doing NXT notes on Tuesday, it'd be great. We'll pay you for it. Uh, anyways, uh, so 
uh, this match ends up with uh, they both kick out of finishes, man. I think Becky yeah. kicked out of a manhandle. I'm sorry, Becky kicked out of a riptide, yeah. and Rhea kicked out of a manhandle slam. And when Becky yep. goes up to give, because Rhea was going to get Becky up there to do some crazy top rope shit, and then Becky uh, goes up and is able to sort of thwart that off, and then try to hit a manhandle off the top. Be- uh, Rhea is able to uh, counter that, or she's able to. Uh, uh, yeah, first she gives her a riptide into the buckle, and then Becky sort of stumbles out of that, and then uh, Rhea hits another riptide, just a regular one. But the way she did it, it was just like, not to use you know the same expression that Becky does, but manhandled her right up and just yeah. with ferocity just yeah, dropped muscled her. muscled her up and muscled her down, yeah. Dude, yeah. and it's just by the... It's one of those matches that built to Rhea just dominating by the end. Yeah. And it almost looking kind of easy for her. And she's just this force of nature at this point. Yeah. And it's just so awesome to see her continually like able to level it up. And it's like at this point, they're kind of booking themselves into a situation where it's like, how long is this rain going to be? And who the hell is going to be her Cody Rhodes? I know. I know. I know. Yeah, it remains to be seen. Definitely remains to be seen. Thea Hale, that's who it should be. <laughs> the plucky Thea Hale. I mean, Hale. you got to assume at some point Rhea and, Be- and Bianca are on a collision course, whether that's next year at Mania, a couple of years down the line. Um, you know, Jay just had her first match outside of the Rumble. We don't know what they have planned for her in the future. If they're able, if they are able to successfully sort of get Jade to be just an absolute powerhouse, Mm -hmm. you know? And I think it's, it is going to be a push and pull between the experience factor with her. And because not everything they do, they're going to be able to like mask with, you know, a multi-man match like they did tonight. Um, But if they're able to get her to the point where she can hang in a 15 minute match, because I think the last thing they want to do is what they did in a, which is mirror what they did in AEW which was just like super easy squash matches against kind of nobody yeah. opponents, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, to get her to the point where, hey, she can put on a 12-minute just, you know, really good match, I mm-hmm. think that's what they're going to want to do. If yeah. if she can get to that point, then, yeah, she can be the, the you know, the one to take it off Rhea. But that might take some time. Oh, yeah, you yeah. Know? yeah. I don't. I don't think it's anything. Rhea's going to have that title for a while. Because in terms Longer. of presentation, Jade is like there, and Bianca is an obvious name, and I. But I wonder if they want to sort of, and they've teased it, so I don't know. Maybe, maybe yeah. it will will be, you know. Yeah, who knows? Who knows? Because my mean, God, that, the, that match would be. Imagine if they had a series of from like Mania to SummerSlam. Yeah. You know, at stipulation matches along the way, they trade the belt a couple times. Even if they did, even if they did Bianca versus Rhea, just like at 41 as like this huge, massive thing. Yeah. I mean, their star power is so great. Yeah. And if Bianca ends up winning the Rumble next year and she's on the same brand as Rhea, my good, the star power there. Off the charts. Off the charts. Off the charts. Yeah. That could Off be so, that could be something real. And the match itself would be killer. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, so next match is the six pack. Tag team title ladder match. Before that, though, Pretty Deadly has this video package where they're kind of going, doing a rundown of all the teams in this ladder match. They're not in it, but, you know, kind of talking about each team. Um, that match was next. He got, we are, we are. DIY, A-Town Down Under, New Day, New Catch Republic, Judgment Day, and Awesome Truth. DIY is leaning a little too hard to this DX thing, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. Tommaso yeah. Ciampa shouldn't be doing like parody gear. It's it's the thing is like they're kind of just doing, you know, hey, the crowd likes it. I know. You know, hey, you know what? People start cheering when I go like this a lot. When I go if like I do this, it more, then they try, they, they they cheer more. Then they cheer yeah. more. And yeah. we're good guys. Our job is to get the crowd to cheer for us, you know, so let's do this. And then hey, you know what the crowd really likes? DX. So what if we get some gear that's kind of like DX? Because well, they had the they had the overlay, the DX overlay during the. Yeah, I know it's when my internet crapped out, so I didn't see the entrance. Oh, you didn't, didn't see, see a lot that. Of yeah, they match. had the overlay going on there. Not all the frenetic cuts and not the theme. They just had the overlay with the yeah. And stuff. Was it super corny? Yeah. Oh yeah. 
because uh, Gargano had like a Shawn Michaels cowboy hat on, and they had the DIY spray painted like DX, but not the original logo when they did the 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 Shawn Michaels Triple H reunion. Too much genuflecting. Got to back up. Got to back up on that. Before we continue on with the tag match, uh, a couple of these super chats here. I want to get caught up. Mickey G here with a two dollar one says, "What's the most Russo twist that can happen tomorrow?" Um, Triple H wins the title. Alex yeah, Cars say yeah. says, I was slightly bummed Dom and Santos lost, but also happy to see Jason Kelsey's now an honorary member of the LWO. Yeah, that was good to see. Uh, Casual Fox here, the super chat says, sadly, Cody was playing honor mode, so he can't reload a save. Okay. Uh, Avery Wash says, I feel like Jay and Jimmy being underwhelming is the reason most people are, are let down at this night. Yeah, like I said, it was sort of like, if that match was absolutely killer, We'd probably be like, man, what a solid night one this has been. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I know. I know. Because like, there's a possibility for that match to have so much emotion, in, you know, behind it. Oh, it could it could have been like a four and a half. It could have yeah. been a four and a half. It was like there's there's the ingredients there for that to be really something. And it just kind of happened. Might be like a three and a half, dude. If that. No, I no. Oh, wow. You're going to give it no. a dud? I'm not going to go that low. But if... <laughs> If a match has the ingredients, this, this is even extending beyond my own expectation. Oh, if a wow. match has the ingredients to really deliver. Yeah. And it doesn't. Oh, man. You get punished. Oh. Negative. Uh, no, I'm not going negative on it. Tacoma Streetcar Disaster here with the Super Chat. What a great name. Says, as someone who is primarily an AEW guy, had a lot of fun tonight. Happy Sammy got his win. Had a good laugh knowing Steve was devastated by that result. Yeah, you know, it, it, it. somebody had to beat him. And the yeah. way they built that story, uh, I guess it, it, it was fine that it's him. Uh, Charles Williams here, gifted five memberships to the community. Thank uh, you. Tom Koch here with Super Chat says, Gunther had to lose. My thought process is once Cody beats the Rock at SummerSlam, he'll need a good villain to fight. Uh, Casual Fox says Sami Zayn is a two-time streak breaker now. Sami versus Rhea at Mania 41, mm. maybe. Uh, thank you, David, for the super chat. Thank uh, you. Casual Fox also says Sami versus Mommy. Let's do it. Um, DJ Depression says, you catch the ref trying to hand Roman Seth's belt. Oh, no, I didn't. Oh, I didn't see that, no. And then uh, Demon Gamer says, I want our truth to win money in the bank. Think of the comedic potential. I, the crowd loves our truth. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Popped I huge for the result of this tag team match. Um, some good gear. Maybe not DIYs, but uh, New Day with the Rocky-inspired gear. And I guess I didn't hear but commentary mentioned that that was some of Xavier Woods' uh, gear back when he was Austin Creed. Yeah, Consequences, consequences Creed. Consequences Creed. Creed. Gosh, Creed. can't talk. Yeah. In uh, at TNA. So he had on the Rocky Four gear and... Kofi had on like that was like the Rocky was it the Rocky three gear and Rocky three was he doing the yellow that was two was it two what are you wearing three I don't remember neither do I don't remember what's your favorite Rocky movie I mean the four is the one I grew up with yeah I think I'm a three guy both yeah. have shocking deaths yes um, but, uh, but anyway, so yeah, talk about this tag match a little bit because I didn't see a bunch of it because my internet went out. That's right. Um, it, in some ways the, 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 the tag match here mirrored the main event in that it wasn't nearly as long. It took a while to get going a little bit by the end. It was fun and there was a lot of crazy stuff. So, um, at one point, awesome truth hit a double cr skull crushing finale on priest and then, uh, DIY do some cosplaying as DX. Truth tells Gargano hit a sweet chin music. He does. Champa hits him with the pedigree. You know, it's a fairy tale ending pretty much. And then uh, DIY is like, all right, we're going to fight Awesome Truth now. And they're like, no, we'll both climb ladders and both be tag champions for different brands. So, so cool. So they go up there and they start climbing. A Town, Down Under, push them off the ladder. They climb up. They grab the SmackDown titles. And we had a question. Once he went a set of titles, are you out or you continue the match? We found out pretty quickly they got to continue the match. Uh, that was until New Catch Republic hit Waller with a powerbomb out of the ring through a ladder. We didn't see Grayson Waller again the rest of the match. Yeah, yeah. Um, so they weren't in contention to win anything else. So anyways, uh, down towards the end, uh, like Gargano hits bait with an air raid crash off the ladder. 
uh, Gargano hits Pete Dunne with a slingshot DDT out of the ring and threw a table on the floor. That was yeah. nuts. That was nuts, yeah. Absolutely nuts. So at one point, our truth sets up a ladder in the ring. He starts to climb. J.D. McDonough runs down and hits him with a, a nasty-looking devil inside. And he goes and gets Finn. Is like, hey, come on, let's get up the the ladder and get these belts. Commentary made a point of saying that Devlin couldn't grab the belts himself. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So at least they mentioned that rather than sitting there like, why don't you just go up and get the belts for mm -hmm. your team? Like James Ellsworth. I know. So then New Day comes in, take out Finn. Kofi's in with a chair. Uh, and then New Day pushes JD off the ladder through a set of tables on the floor. Um, then Priest hits Lariat on Woods, raises edge on Kofi. He starts to climb the ladder. Um, Miz climbs in, punches Priest off. Uh, Priest hits Miz, throws this busted up ladder out of the ring. Another one comes in. Um, and then Truth gets in the ring and pushes Priest off and hits an attitude adjustment out of mm -hmm. the ring. Yeah. So then he starts to climb, takes the belts down. Awesome. Truth, your new Raw Tag Champs, A-Town Down Under, your new SmackDown Tag Champs. Yeah, I like that. I think Truth and Miz have both been doing really, really good work, and it's mm -hmm. clear the crowd loves our truth um, You know, where does this leave Judgment Day? I guess we'll see by the end of tomorrow night. Is Priest going to have an opportunity to cash in? Is he going to attempt to cash in? Are we going to have any idea – if he even realizes that he's still Mr. Money in the bank and that that's how this thing works, at least tease something, if nothing else, and yeah. then give us a reason as to why it's not going to work in that particular moment. It's either going to be a situation, whether he cashes in unsuccessfully or tries to and can't complete the process and the briefcase to the ref and the bell ringing. Essentially, if he one way or the other walks out of WrestleMania with no title, and Rhea is the only, in terms of like how they're jockeying for leadership position in Judgment Day. If Priest walks out no title and only Rhea is a champion coming out of Mania, I mean, what is Priest's case to be leader of Judgment Day? Because that's I mean, the tension right now within Judgment Day. Now, if he comes out with the World Heavyweight Championship, you know, that could up the tension in terms of them butting heads about who's leader. Or if he comes out of the WrestleMania with nothing, then, you know, it's not like his inclination to be leader is just going to step aside. He still wants to be, be seen as a leader of Judgment Day. Rhea's got the title, though. Yeah, yeah. Right now he's got zero claim to that, but he's yeah. all passive aggressive. People also mentioning uh, uh, Jess the ref, you know, getting t getting hmm. Priest's attention to get him off the shitty ladder so he doesn't hurt himself. And people yeah. are like, why, are, why, why did they do this? It's like, you know, even within the world of the WWE Universe and space, um, you know, it makes sense for a ref to be like, hey, character, don't use this ladder because it's a piece of shit. Yeah. So I'm fine yeah. with that. Yeah, I think it's yeah she was yelling at him, and then he was starting to climb the ladder, and she grabs his ankle to get his yeah. attention. Yeah, she's like, hey. She was like, I want to be tag champion anyways. Uh, so, yeah, <laughs> they, they get that win. Um, after that, we had – also, it's like sort of like – we had a match. I mean, it was like the match was fine. Like, I mean, I missed a bunch of it, but it's not like you were saying it was like, you know, the bee's knees. And then we had the LW. I wonder if it was like, hey, let's get a singles in there. Like if Gunther versus Sammy had followed the big multi-man giant yeah, yeah, tag yeah, match. Yeah, 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 yeah. As opposed to LWO versus Legato multi-man, you know, tag match. Or tag whatever match, it was. yeah. You know, and, and again, it was a fine match. It didn't really necessarily progress anything, though. We still don't know if Carlito had any role in Dragon Lee getting attacked. You know, and, and he didn't seem adverse to helping the LWO during the course of this match. He didn't. Yeah, he did. He, like, tossed, I think, Joaquin Wilde or something into, like, a barricade. Yeah. But it's not like he went above and beyond. So it could still be Carlito. That would be such a shame, though. The crowd really likes Carlito. I know. So, I don't know. Hopefully it wasn't him. But, uh, but you know, it maybe, hey, maybe the thought is, hey, the crowd really wants to see him do something. We can't have him really team with Ray because now that's Andrade and it's Dragon Lee. Yeah, yeah. So, like, maybe he can join uh, Legato. Yeah. That's a and maybe this could be a slow build to something, you know? Maybe it's a situation mm -hmm. where Ray looks him over so many times, you know, for Dragon Lee, for Andrade, for whoever else, that Carlito's like, all right, I've had enough of this. Hey, Santos, you were right about Ray. Yeah, yeah. 
everything is everything is very like slow burn these days you know yeah. so it's gonna just be like three months from now and we're like when the hell is carlito gonna turn because it's gonna be like thing after thing after thing I after know. thing i know it's gonna be just a protracted thing yeah uh so anyways uh electra gets up on the apron as Alina pulls her off and hits a moonsault onto electra that was crazy that was an awesome was. spot uh lwo and legato take each other out with dives joaquin wilde's like i want to get i want to get my uh, wrestlemania moment come on help me do my cool launching thing that's his spot. Uh, so he gets launched into Berto and Garza. Mm -hmm. And then Escobar hits some uh, double knees to Ray and sends him into the post. Santos then screams to Dom to get a chair and smash his brains. Two massive dudes in Lucha Mass end up being, who is Jason Kelsey and who? Jason Kelsey and Lane Johnson. One yeah. a former and one a current uh, offensive lineman for the Eagles. Yeah. There you go. Uh, and they attack Dom, throw him and San so throw him and Santos into the ring. We get a double six one nine. Andrade hits a message on. I forget which one. Santos and then Ray hits a frog splash. Maybe no, that was Santos, Santos got Santos got pinned. Santos got pinned. So Dom got the message. Yeah. Uh, and then they end up getting the win. Andrade, so much fun, though. God, oh, he he's is. so much fun to watch. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Andrade and Rey Mysterio get the win. The Luchadors unmask as Lane Johnson and Jason Kelsey. Crowd goes crazy. Everybody loves it. And then uh, we see the hype video for Jimmy and Jay. Uh, Lil Wayne helps Jay with his entrance. Uh, and, then, and then we have the match. And, yeah, basically it's sort of like, Super kick you know, party. It's it's a super kick party, and then we get a bit where Jay gets the best of Jimmy, and Jimmy's on the ground. And he's like, "Whoa, time out, time out, Us. I'm sorry. I'm kind of a crap brother. I'm not very good." And then wait, super kick, and then he goes up for a splash, hits a splash, but Jay kicks out of that. Uh, Jay crawls to the corner. Jimmy waits for him to stand up and runs into a spear instead. Jay heads up top, hits his own Uso splash, and he gets the win with that. Even the crowd seem, you know, a lot of people are complaining about the crowd. I honestly don't think, I think it's two things. Number one, whenever there's one of these big open air stadiums, the sound just ain't what it is in an arena with 50, yeah. you know, you get a, you get a giant stadium with 73,000 people in it uh, with no roof as opposed to roof. So it's roof or no roof. Yeah. Roof, you can hear a lot more. So like 15,000 sounds like, 70,000, you know what I mean? Sounds loud if it's a really good crowd. But if it's no roof, you can have 200,000 people in there. Yeah, Roof yeah. or no roof? Oh, clearly roof. Yeah, roof. Roof. And if they do Mania in Minneapolis next year, guess what's on the stadium? I'm hoping roof. Correct. It's a dome stadium roof. And they're going to get all the credit for being a great crowd. But in fact, it's only because roof. Well, I mean, not only because. Roof plays a huge part, but if they're all sitting there kind of yawning, they're not going to be credited with being a great crowd simply because there's a roof there. But yeah, it was hard to tell exactly how into the show the crowd was because all the sound. And that was the other thing. Review King here has a right. It's also super cold. So these people. It was. Like during the during the 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 six woman tag match, like the crowd was super chanting for Jade. As soon as she got yeah. in, crowd was going crazy. Yeah. It didn't really sound that loud, but you look around, people are very happy. And then by the time the main event rolls around, you see people out there like, yeah, it's forty, it's cold. It's so low forties out there. Yeah, people yeah. are freezing out there. It's cold. But then they were going, they were they were good for the main event too. So they were, especially as it picked up. Yeah. Speaking of the six woman tag match, that was next. Damage control: Oscar, Kyrie, Sane, Dakota Kai. Taking on Bianca Belair, Naomi, Jade Cargill. You know, ever since, I mean, shoot, go back further than that. Bianca, Naomi, and now Jade are three of three wrestlers with the absolute best presentation yeah, in WWE. Sure. Yeah. And you put them together as a team. Yeah. They look like, as a unit, yeah. they were from the future. Yeah, right. They look, they like... look like superheroes from the future. Mm hmm. Yeah. And. It's it, it incredible. I'm almost at a loss for words about you know, they had the their entrance on the platform that descended down next to the ramp, mm -hmm. and they had some, some music playing, and they had it was dramatically lit, and it landed, and Jade steps off. She gets a little bit of her theme, and then uh, Naomi steps off, and she's got this hat that's got like glow stuff in it. Mm -hmm, yeah, and and Bianca gets off, and she has like Jordy LaForge type sunglasses on. Yeah. Incredible. 
even at the press conference, Naomi was wearing a jacket that had like some weird LED like stuff in it, and it was just like doing all these weird colors. Incredible. And stuff. Yeah, it's it's really off the charts. It's, Absolutely it's incredible. Yeah, yeah. As expected, true. they won. They beat Damage Control. Again, a fun match. The crowd was really into every tease that they had of Jade getting the hot tag, mm-hmm, yeah. and it finally happened. She lays everybody out. Um, uh, at one point, Bianca hits Kyrie with the KOD, and then Oscar's trying to miss Bianca. Instead, misses. Oh, sorry, Bianca tries to hit a KOD on on Kyrie. Uh, Kyrie escapes. Oscar tries to miss Bianca. Bianca gets out of the way. Oscar accidentally missed Kyrie. Naomi takes out Kyrie. Bianca hits Oscar with her braid. That was heck loud. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Jade hoists Dakota up, does a lap around the ring, hits Jaded to get the win. So after Life here says they were X Men, so Bianca might have been Cyclops. I didn't recognize if the others were if if Naomi and and Jade were sporting like X Men specific gear. Yeah, I, don't I didn't notice think either. that was the case. But if they, oh, okay. Afterlife says Jade is Storm. Storm, Naomi's yeah. I mean, Gambit. Yeah. I'd have to look okay. at the gear again to see if that's the case. Hold on, I'm right. going to put this one out because she's annoying right All now. All right, very well. So let me get a hype video for Gunther versus Sami Zayn. Um, and we have a segment backstage where Sammy's talking to his wife and his son. And so, uh, you know, she, his wife's saying, you know, you feeling ready, so on and so forth. And, you know, he talks to his son and says to his wife, it's like, I don't, I don't want him watching this live in the crowd. You can watch it on TV, but I don't want your ringside, essentially, is what he's saying. And, she, and, and so, you know, he says his goodbyes to them and, and walks off. Chad Gable walks up to him and, and, you know, wishes him good luck and says, you've had it in you this whole time. You didn't need me, <laughs> but now you owe me a favor. So I'm guessing Gable's going to get a title shot really soon. So Sammy keeps walking backstage, walks up to Kevin Owens and he just gives him a huge hug, hypes him up. You know, I, I the conversation with the family didn't actually sway me that he had he was going to win. The conversation with Gable didn't either. Gable even made a point of saying, I'm not going out there with you. So when Kevin Owens was there. It's like, all right. You know what it was for me? It was Chad Gable saying, you're going to owe me a favor. It's because you don't say that unless they get to pay it off. Yeah. Like It's not like he's going to lose and Gable and he's going to be like, hey, what was that favor you wanted? Not, well, not now. You lost. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that to yeah, me. Yeah. And then when I see Kevin Owens, I agree with you. It was like, oh, yeah, totally. Um so yeah, but still, it's Gunther, and so I'm fine with that. It's like because they could swerve us still with all. Oh, that. absolutely! Because imagine the heartbreak if that's all set up and Sammy loses. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, so, anyways, Sammy makes his entrance. Uh, Gunther does with Imperium. Match begins, and it's basically Gunther destroying Sammy for a better part of this match. There was some back and forth early, but Gunther's chopping him, hitting power bombs, putting sleeper holds on him. Um. Uh, at one point, Sammy's looking for a Haluva kick. Gunther, though, hits him with the Lariat. Hits the second power bomb of the match, but then lifts him up for third of the match, second consecutive. Sammy kicks out again. So Gunther's upset, and so he just starts talking crap to Sammy's wife, who's sitting ringside. Yeah. Um, and he just continues to kick and chop and stomp on Sammy. So eventually, Sammy makes his way up. Gunther hits him with the Lariat. He keeps on mocking Gun- or Sammy. And starts t- keeps talking trash to Sammy's wife. Gunther's looking for another power bomb. Um, uh, sorry, hits another power bomb. He goes up top, hits a splash. Doesn't bother pinning him. Goes back up, hits another splash. Um, kicks Sammy kicks out. So he heads back up top, but he's too slow this time because after he kicks out of the, the the splash again, Sammy starts like firing himself up. So he's starting to get to his feet. So Sammy hits him with a haluva kick while. Gunther's on the top rope. Sammy hits the top turnbuckle brain buster. Heck yeah, it was yes. really cool. Heck I am yes. conflicted, though, because I'm like, here in this match, now against Gunther. Oh, digging deep. Digging deep to the El Generico days. He busted out Gunther. something that he hadn't done, as far as I know, in a while. It's a really disrespectful move. It is. I don't like it going down with Gunther. All right. 
Um, I I was making this joke during the stream, and it was because because it's funny. As wonderful a career as Sami Zayn has had, twenty years or whatever it's been, multi-time you know decorated champion, almost beat Roman Reigns. Mm -hmm. Could you imagine just how better he could have been this entire time if he just went to the gym every once in a while? Because that's what I get from this match. Is oh my god, he beat Gunther 666 days. The devil yeah. that Gunther's been intercontinental champion, couldn't get it done on a random episode of Raw. Comes to WrestleMania, has one session in the gym with Chad Gable, does a couple squats, gets on a cardio machine, like a couple reps in the ring, running some ropes. And like, oh my god, he <laughs> Gable shows him like, like a dramatic video package of Gunther mm -hmm. talking, and he's like, you see what he's doing here? He's talking, this is where you want to get him, and it's like. What Sammy? Like, has he unlocked? Like, are we just gonna get Sammy in the gym all the time, being like, "Oh my God, one time in the gym, and look what I did." He's like, "I'm gonna be the belt collector now because I'm gonna be in the gym every day." I know, I know, I know. So after the brainbuster, two huluva kicks, Sammy gets the win. Uh, happy for Sammy. It's a huge moment for him. It's two consecutive manias. He's gotten huge wins. Yeah. Um. You know, we made it perfectly clear. Huge Gunther fans here. Oh, yeah. Um, and it didn't necessarily seem like the story was there, but I don't know. Sort of hot shot of the story. Yeah, man. they did kind of hot shot the story. It wasn't one of those things where it seemed inevitable, you know? You're right, yeah. And when you have someone like Cody at this point, I know we said that last this last year, it kind of feels inevitable that Cody's going to beat Roman tomorrow. You know what For I mean? Sure, yeah. Because that's what the story dictates. Mm -hmm, um, yeah. And it had been cool to see the same thing kind of with Gunther given the length of his reign, especially. Mm -hmm, yeah, 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 I agree, I agree. Uh, after that, we had, uh, let's see here. Oh, Nick Aldis and Adam Pierce announced 72,543, which means what's those? What, what's Dave Meltzer going to report the actual figure to be? Uh, 62,000. Could you imagine if they actually started, like, giving us the right number? I know. Uh, Eastside Reviews here. The Super Chat says, fun fact, The Rock is the only person to main event WrestleManias in four different decades. Really? Interesting. Uh, and he's the aughts, the 2010s, and the 2020s. Yeah, I guess that so. That is four decades right there. Uh, let's see here. We had after that uh, Cody. The Cody Vader's back. From WrestleMania, yeah. He emerged from the floor. Adrenaline in his soul. I really and then the wish Rocks it short circuited entrance. like it did that time he was on Raw, and then they got rid of it altogether. Oh yeah, he's oh yeah. Pokes out. He's like, well, because they they had the the steps that went up to it. Because <laughs> obviously there's not like anything under the stage. Yeah. On a Raw, so he can't come out of the floor. So they had the steps that he. Yeah, no, and he just kind of got stuck there that one. <laughs> Seth's out next. Uh, Rock has this uh, elongated entrance that's very video game theme. He is final boss. They had uh, the Brahma Bull outline at fire. Yeah. And he's got some tearaway, kind of like partially like athletic pants, but also kind of slacks, but boot cut. Your boot cut? Like really With wide boot cut? With the Versace vest. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he looked kind of like magician rock. A little bit, yeah. Like stripper magician, though. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like some sleight of hand. Yeah. <laughs> Off comes the pants. <laughs> yeah, he's like, he's like, hey, pick a card. And then they put it back in the deck, and he's doing this shit, and then he pulls it out of his trunks. You exactly. know where his dick was. <laughs> he's like, here. And he opens it up, and they have to go and fish it. Oh, fish my for goodness. it. <laughs> and then Roman's out next with only Heyman, no Jimmy, no Solo. And, uh, yeah, we get almost 45 minutes. And it took a while to get going. It took a while to get going. I'd say the last 15 minutes were wildly fun, which means that there's 30 minutes that kind of was a bit on the plotting side. I mean, they yes. took it outside. They It was a lot of brawling, just so much brawling. Um, but by, you know, by the time, but, you know, none of it, at no point during this match was I sitting there, like, maybe it's because we, you know, we're engaging with the crowd and everything and, you, and we got each other and everything. But, like, at no point was I like, God, I'm so bored right now. It was just like, I think part, partially I was also like, 
paying attention to every little thing the rock was doing mm-hmm. hoping that he didn't tear something because mm-hmm. he's he's big dude yeah he is um but uh it's not it's also kind of matched i don't think i'd go back and watch the entire thing no you know i might go back and watch you know the last 10 minutes 15 minutes or so yeah yeah um let me see when it really started to get going uh oh probably when roman accidentally speared the rock oh for sure yeah um, that was awesome uh so that happens Brock sells it like a million bucks. Oh, he really does. Because Seth, yeah, Seth pushed Cody out of the way, yeah. and the Rock takes it. And he actually like he's about to throw up right there in the ring. <laughs> yeah, and Roman's like, great. "Oh God, what have I done?" It was great. So then Seth and Cody, Seth pedigrees Roman, Cody pedigrees Rock, double cover. They both kick out. Um, that's when the match really starts breaking down. Uh, Rock clears off the uh, Spanish announce table. Uh, Try, gets him up to try to hit a rock bottom. Instead, Seth grabs his leg. Uh, rock kicks him off, but then Cody hits the rock with a rock bottom through the announce table. And then Roman spears Seth through the barricade. So everybody's laid out. And eventually, Cody gets up, rolls Rock into the ring. Uh, and as he does that, Roman hits him with a drive by on Cody. So Roman gets in, he tags in, uh, he stomps on Cody, hits some shots. Uh, they start trading shots back and forth. Cody hits a crossroads, and then the second, he's going for the third. But as he's kind of backing up against the ropes, The Rock, who earlier got his weight belt out, smacks him with it. Oh, big time. It was a gnarly oh, one, too. Yeah, it was. It Cody really was. sells it big time. He does. So um, <clears throat> Rock hits a spear. Sorry, Roman, Roman hits, hits a spear. Sorry, Rock's on the apron. He wants to tag in. So then The Rock tags in, hits the rock bottom, hits the people's elbow to get the win is bloodline rules for night two steve and they recreated the shot of cody sitting in the same spot in the ring instead of a rubber chicken seth rollins came in and uh we had the rock and roman reigns in the background throwing their ones up um so uh so yeah some good symmetry coming yep. around to night two uh kind of feel like cody's got this in the bag but the yep. the, the deck is stacked against him um so uh so yeah you know, could be fun stuff. Uh, our Big Blue Predictions Challenge is well underway. 315 friendos. Awesome. This is our biggest predictions challenge ever. A lot of people signed up in the last 24 hours or so. Mm-hmm. So it's awesome to see so many people. Huge shout out to Cody Miles for putting yes. the form together. We couldn't do this without him. Nope. Um, right now, Gamer Realm massive has a massive lead. Uh, with I think eighty three points or seventy three points, points is correct. Let me points. see who's in second. I, uh, I had that earlier. Sorry. It's as if Gamer Realm has people on the inside, but I'm not going to accuse. Look, I'll I'll put it this way: if you are, if you do have like inside info, like you know, maybe throw us some of that in addition to winning predictions. I'm cool yes. with you winning predictions if you work there. That's fine. You know, not really fair, but no, but you know, you get your free hat. It's cool. You, you've worked your way into now. If Gamer Realm does like, let me ask you something. Let's say Gamer Realm's on the inside. Yeah, and they it becomes obvious they win like three in a row. Get all the props. Then it's like that time I went to trivia. This is years ago. I went to trivia and I won so many times they asked me to stop playing. Well, I mean, you know, Jeopardy used to have a five and out. Yes. Is that something we would have to? Sure. Okay. Sure. Okay. Death and Taxes says, listening to Steve's solo prediction video ruined me. Oh. Hey, look, man. Look. Like, don't, don't, don't listen to me. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> so Gamer Realm has a 12-point lead going into night two. I believe Gamer Realm is perfect. Yeah. For day one. And that's perfect for stand and deliver. deliver. Perfect for night one of WrestleMania. Yeah. And yeah, that's crazy. That's it. And he had like eleven on the tag match. Yeah. That to me is like nuts. I mean, it's the same thing that I picked too, but I only had one confidence. Yeah, I know, because there's six other teams in there. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Or five other teams, sorry. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, so congratulations, Gamer Realm so far. There's still a whole other, you know, however many matches, six matches tomorrow. Yeah. But uh but right now a pretty commanding lead for the Frendo. Of course, coming up, we still have 
Dynasty, which maybe we'll do as a point advantage situation for Dynasty leading into Backlash um, next yeah, month. Yeah, because they're we two can, weeks apart. Yeah, they're two weeks apart. Um, so, uh, and the way you get to uh, participate in the Friendo uh, Predictions Challenge, of course, is by getting the Friendo Club set up. Patreon.com slash Stephen Larson. You click on the Friendo Club setup. Uh, it's $5 a month or... You can click join right here at youtube.com slash Stephen Larson. Uh, it's $5 a month as well. Not only do you get access to the Big Blue Predictions Challenge and the opportunity to win a great hat, but you get access to our bonus episode, FriendoCast. We do it every single week, and it's the one place where we don't talk about professional wrestling. We talk about everything but professional wrestling. Uh, we've done 13 of them so far. 14 is going up this coming Monday. Uh, so you get access to our weekly bonus podcast. Usually they're over an hour long. Uh, and then also get access to the question threads we do for the weekly television recaps. Uh, no uh, question threads for the pay-per-views uh, because we want to get our rest in for tomorrow. We got our star ratings we're going to be doing tomorrow. Yes. And we've got, uh, of course, WrestleMania Night 2 watch along and review. So please join us for that. We'd love to, to, to see you guys back here uh, on the youtube.com slash Stephen Larson. If you uh, are a Twitch person, twitch.tv forward slash Stephen Larson. Be sure to check us there as well. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We appreciate it. And until next time, oh, perfect timing because Hilton's right there and he's wrapping us up. He's wrapping us up. It's kind of, he's like, hey, Duke. He's, it was he's like, like Duke. is this one of those situations where someone has to hide around the ring for the entire show only to make what? an appearance to the main event? What is, he's not you in wanna there. You want to watch Collision? He's not in there. That's weird. I know for sure that's not Hilton. He said he wants to watch Collision. Mm.